So those of you who have looked at the abstract of the talk will realize that this was actually supposed to be a short course for the graduate students last week. So, and then things changed. So I decided to keep the same title and abstract, but change the talk a little bit. So I hope it's not too disappointing. Um, I mean, the content is easy, so I just condensed some easy material to make it look like a research talk. <laughs> so, there are a couple of theorems there, so it's not too bad. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about. So homotopy, well, I don't know if exactly this, uh, this is exactly the same title I gave you, but this is what I want to talk about. So homotopy types of topological stacks. Okay, so, <coughs> so let me tell you what the outline is. So first I will fix the setup, then I will review some very old ideas, some old ideas. No, I don't know why I'm putting these zeros there. And then I will talk about the classifying space of a topological stack. And then I will talk about the singular chains on a topological stack. So this part is joint work with joint work in progress. Tom Coin, and the last part, well, is really just a question. So what happens with higher stacks? Okay, so let me fix the setup. So I'm going to use a very unorthodox approach to stacks. So I will take a stack to be a free sheaf of groupoids. On, on the category of topological spaces. So for me, a stack is a one stack. I'm old fashioned. So when I say stack, I really mean one stack. There is no infinity going on. And I work on the site of topological spaces. It could be all topological spaces. It could be compactly generated weak Hausdorff. I don't want to get into technicalities of that. It will work in either case. Okay? And yeah, the, the, I will be working with pre sheaves rather than categories fibered in groupoids. Okay? So <coughs> it makes things uh, much easier to explain. Okay? So. The gadgets I'm interested in are topological stacks. Okay, so these are stacks. With, oh, I forgot to say, and there's also the descent condition. So I suppose everyone knows. If this were a short course, I would explain what that means, but I think everyone knows these things these days. So a topological stack is one of these guys which comes from a topological groupoid. So the stack coming from, so stack associated to a topological groupoid. Okay, so these are topological spaces. <coughs> and I will make an assumption, so I will Yes. Continuous. For now, con actually, I'm going to make an assumption now. So just bear with me one second. So I will assume is what I call a local fair vibration. So what that means is, if this is R, this is X. 
And here I could take either the source or the target map, doesn't matter, both of them are equivalent. So it, this means if I take a point here, any point for every x, for every y, there is a neighborhood V and neighborhood here U. So for every X, for every Y in R, there are neighborhoods V and U such that if I restrict my map, so let me give it a name, S. Is a fair vibration. Actually, a lot of the things I say will be true even without this condition, but since I don't want to keep repeating uh, this condition, so let's assume it is the case all the time. Okay, so these are the objects I want to work with. Some very standard properties of topological stacks. So first of all, they form a two category. which I will denote top stacks. Two fiber products exist. So that means two fiber products of topological stacks are again topological stacks. Namely, they are closed under two fiber products within this category. And of course, the famous Yoneda lemma. Every topological space gives you a topological stack. So this is a fully faithful embedding. That's all I need. <coughs> okay. So the question I want to ask is, see on the left hand side, we know how to do algebraic topology. Homotopy theory makes sense. Like the no classical sense of whitehead and those guys. You can talk about homotopy groups, the homoto weak homotopy type, and so on. And what I want to do is I want to extend that theory to that side. So that's the humble goal of this talk. So just to give you an example, for example here, if I take a group acting on a space, so this is a topological group action, then an example of such a groupoid is the transformation groupoid of the action, and then the corresponding stack is called the quotient stack. So I want this generalization of algebraic topology from this side to that side to have the property that, for example, in this case, it gives me equivariant uh, information about x. So G equivariant homotopy theory of x should be captured by that theory. Okay, so that's, that's what I want to do. So I'll tell you a, a few different ways to think about this problem. So let me tell you about some very old ideas. So these ideas were known even before stacks were defined. So already a few decades ago, people more or less knew about these. So one of the things you could do, so let me just give you a bunch of examples of homotopy invariants you could associate to these guys. So the simplest thing you could do is you could look at maps from, so from now on, that my curly x's will always be topological stacks. You could take maps from the sphere into topological stacks. The sphere is a topological space. You can think of it as a topological stack. So you can talk about these maps. It makes sense to talk about homotopy. So you can easily talk about homotopy between maps. You can also talk about point as homotopy. And you can define the usual homotopy groups, and they satisfy all the expected properties. So that's one thing you could do. It's pretty easy. Or you could try to define uh, uh, homology or cohomology. homology 
Again, it has been known for a long time that you could define the cohomology by looking at the simplicial space associated to your stack. So suppose so suppose you have one of these quotient stacks. <coughs> then to this you can associate a simplicial space. And I learned maybe more than a decade ago from notes by Kai Berend that you could, to this you could associate a bicomplex. So what you do is you look at the chains on each of these XNs. And out of that you can construct a bicomplex. And then you take the tote or, yeah, I think it's called the tot, and you get homology and cohomology. So again, this is something that has been known for a long time, although maybe people don't write it in the language of stacks, but it was known that that gives you the right homology and cohomology <laughs> for a topological groupoid. Or you could be a bit more fancy, so instead of taking this bicomplex, you could take the geometric realization of that. So you have a simplicial space. You take the geometric realization. Now you get an honest space. And homotopy invariance of this guy should be regarded as the homotopy invariance of of X. So that's how you make sense of homotopy invariance for topological stacks. This is not very satisfactory, so not quite satisfactory for a few for a couple of reasons at least so one reason this is not quite satisfactory is if you really want to check that this gives you the right theory for topological stacks you have to check that these definitions are functorial with respect to Morita morphisms. Some people call these bi bundles. See, not every morphism of a stacks come from a comes from a morphism of groupoids. Instead, you have to look at bi bundles. And you have to make sure everything works when you use Y bundles as morphisms. So you have to check the functoriality and these kind of things. It can be done, of course, but it's not convenient. And if you, if you want to do something fancy, things get quite complicated. Another thing that is not quite clear if you use these approaches is how to really go back and forth. For example, if you want to use this approach, how to really go back and forth between this guy and the stack itself go back and forth see for example you could define homotopy groups this way or you could take this guy and look at the homotopy groups of that guy of course you expect them to be the same but to prove that, you have to really work a little bit. It's not obvious that this guy gives you the same homotopy groups as this. There's some complications there. I mean, the point is, a map from Sn to X does not come from a map of groupoids from this, discrete, this uh, trivial groupoid to that groupoid. So 
to really go from a map like this to a map into that guy is not completely obvious. So you want a more functorial appro approach, which really tells you how these two guys are related in a concrete way. So this, these kind of problems actually occurred when we were working on this project with Kai and Ping Shu and Greg Gino. So we really wanted to prove some stuff about topological stacks, and it turned out that it wasn't really the right way to use uh, these uh, ad hoc approaches. So the question that came up, I don't know if Kai remembers that, but this question came up in Kai's office maybe eight years ago. That, <coughs> so the question is, is it true that for every topological stack, there exists a topological space with a map such that phi is a trivial serif vibration. And here x is a topological space. So is it possible to approximate my space homotopically by a topological space, which comes with a map 2x, such that the map is a trivial surf vibration? Being a trivial surf vibration is nice, because it means you can easily go back and forth between the two. This is a weak equivalence, and the fibers are contractible. So all the homotopy theoretic information you want in there or in there will be the same in some sense. So it would be ideal to have such a thing. <coughs> I keep changing my mind if the answer to this question should be yes or no. I mean, I've been thinking that probably the answer is no. But lately I have convinced myself that maybe the answer is yes. So I don't really know the answer to this question. <coughs> what I know, what I do know is the following. So, is it clear? I'm Maybe I should have told you what a trivial surf vibration means. I will give you the definition after I state the theorem. So, I mean, okay, if these are spaces, you know what it means. In the case of stacks, it's the same definition. You just have to be careful with uh, squares being too commutative rather than commutative. That's all there is. So, there is a natural map from this guy here, well, not actually quite this guy, uh, an alternative version of it, which is called the fat realization to X. So this is the fat realization. So the difference between the fat realization and the usual simplicial realization is that here you don't kill the degeneracies. You keep the degeneracies there, you just glue using the non-degenerate maps. So if you take the fat realization, then there is a map such that, and this map has a nice property. It has this property that for every topological space, which is paracompact, and every map from T to X, okay, so this is the picture. If I choose any map to X, the space of lifts of this T to that guy is a contractible topological space. The space of lifts, <coughs> so let me call that F. The space of lifts of F to, to this guy is, is non-empty and contractible. Homotopy equivalent to a point. Is a space or a stack? Yeah, for a compact a space, yes. So for every paracompact topological space, 
So from now on, my convention is every time I use a strict notation, it means a space. If I use curly notation, it means a stack. So for every space, lifts from here to there are essentially unique up to a unique <coughs> homotopy, which is unique up to a unique homotopy and so on. So this theorem was an, at, was an attempt to answer that question. It is related to that question. I will tell you in a moment how it is related to that question. Let me actually give this question a name. Let's call this a star. Okay, so a corollary of this, which is now easy. Once you know the statement, this corollary is easy. You can do it as an exercise. This map phi is is a universal weak equivalence. So the meaning of that is if I take this map to X, t take any other map, so S is a topological space. So any topological space, any map, if I look at the fiber product, then the space extension is a weak equivalent of topological spaces. So any time I base extend this map to a topological space, I get a weak equivalence of topological spaces. In particular, all, all the fibers are contractible. So it sort of does the job. It looks very much like what we needed here, the properties that we, we needed here, are satisfied by this map. So in some sense, it is somewhat satisfactory. <coughs> and the next corollary I want to mention is, I still haven't told you what the trivial surf vibration is. Let me state the next corollary and then I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> Because in fact, I need something more general. I need this definition, which I will write here. So phi is a, phi is a weak, is a, is a trivial weak surf vibration. So this almost answers this star, except that the answer is weak. I don't have quite a surf vibration. I have a weak surf vibration. What does that mean? That means, let me just write down what this means. So we say a map is a weak surf vibration. So this is a weak surf vibration. If and only if every time I have an inclusion of CW complexes, which is a weak equivalence, so CW inclusion, and a diagram like this, well, okay, I have to be careful. These are spaces, so that's okay. But this side, these are stacks. So we are living in a two category. So when I say commutative diagram, I mean a two commutative diagram. So I have a specified, uh, I don't know where I should put this. Maybe I should put it, da, 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 I should put it like that. There is a lift which makes this diagram, the, the, the lower triangle, two commutative, and the upper triangle homotopy commutative in the sense that this map and these maps are fiber-wise homotopic. So in the upper triangle, we don't have commutativity. We only have homotopy commutative, commutativity. So there's a homotopy between this guy and that guy, which is fiber-wise with respect to that map. So that's what a weak surf vibration is. See, so the only problem with this is that I have this homotopy here. I wish I could get rid of it and say that this is too commutative on the nose, but it's not. I only can prove this with this H there. So, yeah, so we are almost there, but I don't know how to get rid of this H. And 
that's a bit unfortunate. I am not going to prove this. I just give you what the ingredient. I just tell you what the ingredients of the proof are. So the proof. So the main two ingredients in the proof are. So I use ideas of Hefliger. And I, I heavily use Dold's paper on partition of unity. Dold's paper on, I don't remember the title of the paper, partition of unity something. It's an annals paper from the 50s. I have to look up the references in my paper which decade? Probably 70s. So these are all, all ideas. As I said, these are old ideas. My only observation was that you get this map, and it has this, this property. The proof turned out to be quite technical. I mean, it's very elementary. You use elementary stuff, but you have to really do some um, 50th century, 50, uh, no, not 50th century, <laughs> uh, 1950s, 50th century mathematics uh, to, you know, glue things and do partition of unity and stuff. So, yeah, it's very, yeah, really, I mean, <coughs> yeah, we are in part of us, so. Things that started in 50th century here, maybe earlier, maybe 12th century. Okay, so, right, so that's what the classifying space does for us. Let me, okay, actually, let me make a definition here. I have a universal weak equivalence from X to my stack with X to topological space. I say X and phi is a classifying space for X. <coughs> Okay, let me tell you how this could be used to prove things. Let me just show you a couple of simple examples. And it's easy to see using what I just erased that These are isomorphisms. So any map from the sphere can be lifted to X, and the lift is unique up to homotopy, and you can use that to prove that these are isomorphic. So it's, it's quite easy. <coughs> Another application, this was one of the motivations for, for us when we asked this question. We wanted to prove Tom isomorphism for stacks. So suppose you have a vector bundle over your stack, and you want to prove the Tom isomorphism. I mean, if you think about the old-fashioned approach, of course, here you could define homology using this bicomplex. You could also do the same using the bicomplex. So it makes sense to form, you could formulate the Tom isomorphism, but I don't think the proof will be that easy to show that it's an isomorphism. using the old approach. But once you have a classifying space, the proof is almost trivial. So we take a classifying space here, 
Then you take the pullback. Well, this is a universal weak equivalence. Therefore, if you take the base extension, this is also weak equivalence. So the homotopy, so the homology here is the same as homology here. The relative homology here is the same as the relative homology here. Here I'm using heavily the fact that this is a universal weak equivalence. So E is homotopy equivalent to E. The complement of the zero section also for the same reason that this is a universal weak equivalence is homotopy equivalent to that. So now we have the tau isomorphism here and therefore we deduce the tau isomorphism here. So, <coughs> yes. This. That would be the, that's the approximation of the stack. Maybe I should have mentioned this. So when you have a group action, No, no, uh, so nothing is missing. So this, so this thing is the thing you mentioned. So to define the, uh, you take this simplicial space and then you take the factorialization, you get what I call the classifying space. So all I'm saying is that there's a map from this the standard guy that people, Milner and all those people have been looking at for ages. There's a map from this space into my quotient stack. So basically all I'm saying is that what they did here captures the homotopy type of the topological stack. So there, and there's a map. This guy has more. The, exactly. So for example, if this, these guys are manifolds, then you have a manifold acting on a manifold. You have a Lie group acting on a manifold. So you get a quotient stack which is a differential manifold. For example, it could have negative dimension but it's something smooth and it's small, so it makes sense. For example, on this side, in the manifold case, you could make sense of intersection theory. That's sort of what we needed. We wanted Tom isomorphism to be able to do intersection theory on the stacks. That. that guy doesn't see the geometry. This guy loses the geometry. These guy, this guy sees the geometry, but the point is that you don't lose any homotopy theory. So the homotopy theory on both sides are the same, but here you have geometry. So you could do geometry, but the invariance you deal with can be captured by looking at the old-fashioned uh, usual stack. Yeah, so that was exactly the idea we had in mind, to be able to do geometry on this guy and be sure that we could, whenever we needed to do homotopy theory, we could go back here and use the standard homotopy techniques. <coughs> right, so, okay, so, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so you the right, right, right. In fact, the, I mean, that's how I define the co or that's how we def I define the cohomology ring. I just take a classifying space and define the cohomology of this to be the cohomology of that. I will show you in a second that this is well defined. Or you could also no, it's easy. This is the easiest way to define cohomology. It's equally easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm saying, I mean, this is an alternative way of doing things which sometimes make life easier. Yeah, I mean, as I said, that's the, the, that was this, this when I said the old ideas. That's how the old way of doing things. But you have to check that that's invariant under Morita morphisms, and that's a bit of it. You have to do bi bundles with those. It's known. It's known. I said it's known. That's why I said it's old ideas. They have been known for decades, maybe from the 15th century. <laughs> so this. Uh, 
gives you a bit more functoriality. That's why I, I like this. So let me say a few words about the functoriality, actually. I put it in quotes because it's not exactly what I want. So suppose you have a morphism of these topological stacks. I choose a classifying space here, and I choose a classifying space there. Can I find a map between them? Well, it turns out actually probably not. So functoriality is not as nice as I claimed it would be. So what I do is first I take the fiber product. These are all topological stacks. This becomes a topological stack. Then I choose the classifying space for that. And then I choose this. <coughs> so functoriality says that, well, not every choice of classifying space, but some choice of classifying space allows you to lift this map upstairs. So it's not very satisfactory. How do you mean to set that I was about to say that. So if you have, now suppose you manage to do the lift. Then, if you look at them as maps in the homotopy category of topological spaces, they are the same. I'm not saying they are homotopic. You may need to invert some quasi-isomorphisms to, to get them to be equal. But anyway, once you pass to the homotopy category, they are the same. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so the homotopy, well, I mean, okay, you have to say homotopies which respect the diagrams will be unique of the homotopy. Yeah. <coughs> so one way to phrase these two facts is to say that taking the classifying space, so let me call that CS, from topological stacks to topological spaces, oh, no, so here I need O gives me a functor. So there is a functor from here to there. See, it's not satisfactory. I, needed, I wanted the functor to top, but now I had to pass through the homotopy category. Okay, let me make a few remarks about this functor. So this functor, the classifying space functor, is the right adjoint to, well, see, I'm already sort of cheating here. It's some kind of a right adjoint to this inclusion. I mean, it doesn't make sense because the target is not top, so it's not right to say that this is the right adjoint. To make it an honest right adjoint, which can be done, you need to localize something after some localization, which I don't want to get into. So this was my attempt at making this an honest functor into top with adjointness properties. And that's all I can say. So <coughs> yeah, so after you invert some maps in here, then this and here, well here you have already done that. You get a you get an adjunction. So I want to explain what this means. And this phi is the co-unit, 
this map phi that I keep writing this. This phi x is the core unit. <coughs> and there's also a diagram version. There's a diagram version. So if you start with a diagram D, you need some condition. I think you need your diagram to be locally finite. Like at every vertex, you have only finitely many arrows. Then you could do this uniformly for all these guys and find a diagram of classifying spaces. See, I was really desperate to make this functorial, so I came up with all these things, but they are not quite satisfactory because at the end of the day, I don't have enough functoriality. I only have functoriality up to homotopy. Let me give you an example of what this last thing means. It doesn't need to be recorded. No. <laughs> so, for example, if you start with a diagram like this, you can always find a diagram of classifying spaces, x, y, z, which maps to this, and on each vertex you have a classifying space. So this way you could also do homotopy theory when you have a bunch of spaces, you have a diagram of spaces. So homotopy properties of this guy are reflected by the homotopy properties of this diagram of topological spaces. So you could do some stuff using these classifying spaces. So they do make your life somewhat easier, but they are not quite satisfactory because, as I said, they are not functorial enough. So now I want to pre present a different approach which is more functorial, so singular chains on topological stacks. So this is joint work. With Tom Coyne. It's very easy. Everything is easy today. So I have a topological stack. I want to define singular chains. So what I do is I just take my topological stack. I think of it as a functor from topological spaces to groupoids. I can restrict that to the simplicial category. This gives me a simplicial groupoid. So here I'm using the fact that delta up sits inside the opposite of the topological spaces and just restrict my functor from here to there. So that gives me a simplicial groupoid. The point is, this simplicial groupoid also captures the homotopy type of X. Of course, you want to be uh, very classical and do everything with simplicial spaces. So here is what you could do. You could really construct a simplicial space out of this in the obvious way. So this is a simplicial groupoid. I can take the nerve. I get a simplicial, simplicial set, which is a bisimplicial set. Then I take the diagonal, and that becomes a simplicial set. I define that to be the singular chains. So here's, now this is completely functorial. It is, in fact, a two functor. So it takes morphisms of stacks, two morphisms of simplicial sets, and um, two morphisms to homotopies. So this is my candidate. This is the most obvious thing you could do, and you could hope that this gives you the right homotopy type. Okay, so 
the first thing you observe, and this is obvious, easy is too much to say here, this is completely obvious, that this agrees with the usual simplicial, uh, com uh, simplicial set associated to, this, associated to a space. So this, is, this agrees with the usual <coughs> singular chains on the topological space when x is a space for the obvious reason, I mean, just by definition. Okay, so it does extend the ordinary definition, but we have to make sure that it has the right properties. So to me, here's the list of the right properties this guy should satisfy. Maybe you want to add your own properties to the list, but these are the ones I could think of. So the question you, you could ask about this singular functor is, The first question is, does this have the same homotopy type? Well, homotopy type, or weak homotopy type, to be precise, as the classifying space? When I, when I first made this definition a year ago, I thought I could prove this in a couple of hours. It took a few months. Maybe I'm stupid, but it's not easy to check. That. I haven't told you if it is true or not. I think I gave it away. It is true. But <coughs> the proof wasn't easy. Maybe you can find an easy proof. But the second question is, if I have a weak equivalence of topological stacks in the sense that if I apply the classifying space functor, I get an isomorphism between the corresponding classifying spaces in the homotopy category. If you have one of those, is the induced map on simplicial sets a weak equivalence? So that's question two. Question three is this a con complex? In the case of the spaces, Sx is always a con complex, and that's a nice thing, that's a useful fact. Or more generally, if I have a weak cell vibration, does that imply that the induced map on singular chains is also a weak, well, here I should say con vibration. So these are all questions. I need a question mark. Question five. Does there exist a map from So if this is a space, there's always a map from the geometric realization of that guy to X, and it's a weak homotopy equivalence. The question is if this is true here. So if my functor satisfies these properties, I'm happy. I don't know, maybe there is something else I should require, but at least, yes. Uh, so it's basically the same diagram that I erased for the weak serf vibration, except that instead of spaces, you have uh, simply shell sets. So it, it has this lifting property for every inclusion of finite, oh, okay, I should be careful. For every inclusion of finite simply shell sets. So I want to be able to, yeah, so if this is an inclusion of finite simply shell sets, which is a, weak homotopy equivalence, I want to be able to lift it su such that this commutes on the nose, but this only commutes up to a fiberwise homotopy. <coughs> okay, so before I tell you the answer to these questions, let's make some observations. How much time do we have? 
much time do I have? Ten minutes? Some very simple observations. Two implies one. Just take this to be a point. No, 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 no. Doesn't. Don't take. It. Take this to be the classifying space map. So two. the classifying space. Okay, so two implies one. Uh, four implies three for the obvious reason. Take y to be a point. Four also implies two. So if I can prove four, it implies three, and it implies two, and it implies one. Maybe I should say a few words about why four implies two. So as I said earlier, I can always, if I start with a morphism of topological stacks, I can always complete it to a square like this, where these guys are classifying spaces. So these maps are both weak fair vibrations which is what I need as the inputs for this. And if I apply the sync functor, I get I get that. I have to be very careful. So there is this annoying thing about two morphisms coming up here. This is only two commutative, so there is a homotopy here. That won't be a problem. I mean, it, you have to be careful, so it adds some details to the argument, but nevertheless, it's not too bad. And there is another fact, which is again easy, that the fiber of this, if I apply the thing to that, gives me the fiber of this. So if I take a point here, let me just call this phi. S of phi, uh, phi inverse of x, is essentially the same as the S phi inverse of X. Well, I mean, okay, if you think in terms of the spaces, if these were spaces, this would actually be homeomorph, I mean, isomorphic to that. Again, due to this fact that you have some two isomorphisms uh, lying around, it turns out this is not a homeomorph, ah, this is not an isomorphism, this is a homotopy equivalence. So something goes into the proof of this, but it's elementary. It follows from the definition. There is no deep thing going on. So now look at this. Here is a weak serve vibration. That means the, the fiber is contractible. So this guy is contractible. Therefore, this guy is contractible. But I know this is also a weak serve vibration by four. So I have a weak serve vibration whose fiber is contractible use the fiber homotopy exact sequence, it follows that this is a weak equivalence. So this is a weak equivalence. That's a weak equivalence. Oh, this is why. This is a weak equivalence because these are just ordinary topological spaces. This, this was a weak equivalence by two out of three. So this is also a weak equivalence by two out of three. Uh, I mean, by, by the fact that this is a weak equivalence, it gives you a weak equivalence of simple shelf sets. Now again, do the two out of three. You, deduce that this is a weak equivalence. <coughs> so, so it's nice. All I need to do is to, is to prove 4. 
And I'm surprised no one has uh, noticed this. Well, it took me a while to notice this. So there's an interesting fact. Four is not true. <coughs> so everything pretty much breaks down. <laughs> and I have three minutes to fix that. So I have to speed up a little bit. So here is a definition I need. So a morphism of uh, topological stacks is, I call it the redefibration. If, I, when I restrict it to delta up, this is a redefibration of simply shell groupoids. Redefibrations make sense for simplicial objects in any model category. Groupoids form model categories. So just repeat the definition Ezra gave in the morning. This is just about some map from a groupoid into another groupoid formed in terms of uh, something like this. Um, yeah, I don't want to write it down. Something in formed in terms of matching spaces should be uh, vibration of groupoids. So, I mean, just copy the same definition Ezra gave, except that now we deal with groupoids. So things are much simpler. Oh, I shouldn't have you have to check it up to two. Up to two, yeah. There is nothing much going on. Groupoids are easy. You only have the lifting property. So to, pro to check vibration, you only need to check the lifting property for paths. Which is even if I'm for the re ah, oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you need to go all the way. I think you need to go all the way. Yeah. Anyway, so now if you have that, the theorem is if basically here I need to add re -D. Okay, so if is a re fibration. And a weak self vibration, then the induced map on singular chains is a con is a weak, well, depending. You could have, so there are two statements here with or without weak <coughs> So the answer to this question is yes, if you also have Reedy. And here you also need the Reedy condition. So corollary, if X is Reedy fibrant, then singular chains on X is a con complex. So here you also need Reedy. So now, with this input, you could show that the argument I gave you for this could be modified. There is a little bit of more work you have to put into it, but um, yeah, so basically the answer is this new version of one and you know, three and four are true. So one, two, this new version of three and four are true. <coughs> Let me say one word about five. So five, where is five? For five, I unfortunately need a condition. Yes, if If the answer to my initial question is 
star is yes, then I, I, we know how to prove this. We know how to prove five. Except that we have to be careful instead of instead of using the ordinary geometric realization, we have to use the fat one. It's always the fat one that comes up. Okay, I guess I should stop. I just wanted to say a few words about uh, the case of infinity stacks and so on, but maybe I just say them in words. The point is now that this, the definition of a singular complex of a stack, now it makes sense for higher stacks as well. If you take a pre-sheaf of simplicial sets, you could do the exact same thing. And what I have proved so far, you know, these properties, they justify that it, it gives you a good definition. So you could, you have a functorial way to associate a homotopy type to any infinity topological stack. And just one more minute, just to formulate one last question. So this is the generalization of the question star. I want to know the answer to this question. So if I find the answer, I'll be happy and leave the subject. So question. Is the question a star that I posed at the beginning? Is it true for infinity topological stacks? And by an infinity topological stack, I mean the ones coming from simplicial spaces. So not just any pre sheaf of simplicial group weights, but question is star true for infinity topological stacks, namely the ones coming from simplicial spaces, and does, the, does these infinity topological stacks have a classifying space in the sense I defined earlier? So these are questions that would be nice to find an answer to. At least I find them interesting. Okay, thank you. Thank you.